Welcome to this episode of Truth Seekers, where His Grace Bishop Emilianos of Miloa will answer questions sent in by the youth with a member of the youth. Hello, Thomas. Thanks for coming here today. If you would like to tell us a few things about yourself before we open the envelope and go to the question. All right, so I'm Thomas, obviously. I'm 16 years old. I'm from All Saints Parish in Belmore and I love my sport. What's your favourite sport? I'm tied between soccer and cricket. Good. You good at it? I hope so. <laughs> Great. So today I will ask you a question and you give me your opinion in your own words. And afterwards, if I have anything to add, we'll see how we go from there. Okay. You ready? The question is, how do you truly connect with God in prayer, in your own words? Prayer is something special because you feel as though it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation with God because it's like He's there in front of you because you're looking at the icon during prayer. And you truly connect with Him because you're having like a deep conversation. You're telling Him about the way, how you're feeling and how your day went and stuff like that, because for me, that's what I do. And um, other times that you feel more connected with God, and other times that you feel that it's more difficult to connect with God, or it's always the same sort of connection? Yeah, sometimes it depends on the occasion. Like, I feel really connected when I really, like, I need something. Like, for example, like, I need something to open my eyes in a way, because I may have had a bad day at school or something. And then prayer is something I can turn to that can lift my spirits and stuff like that, yeah. What's, what's your opinion on this question? When God created us, He breathed inside us and He gave us the Holy Spirit. This means that in a way, God is, since then, always connected with us. So when you love God, you don't even need to say any words because this love is the best prayer ever by itself and you can feel the connection you can feel God's love and they say that if God was to allow us to experience to feel how much he loves us we would go crazy that's how that's how great it is we can't even handle it we, we, the human nature can't handle God's love and uh, this can be given by prayer, but this can be given um, when our hearts are prepared. How we can achieve this constant connection with God, like the unceasing prayer. And there are lots of uh, opinions, lots of ways, lots of things to say, but I will only say one thing which might not be something you will hear every day. So. There was a professor of um, um, cardiology, he was a surgeon in the University of Athens, a very pious and uh, respectful man, a very a true Christian. I think he was wondering how it is to pray unceasingly. And um, he had a dream, and Elder Sophronius, Saint Sophronius told him, my doctor, you have to pray all the time. And uh, the doctor replied, Yet down, I'm operating hearts. I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm doing surgery of open heart. If I was to pray, I might kill someone. And uh, sense of Ronis told him, now you don't understand. You have to do this. And he saw his hands like that. This is what literally the doctor was doing by opening up the hearts when he was operating. But what sense of Ronis told him to do is to always keep his heart open in front of God. So when we have our hearts like that, giving them to God and having them open in front of God at all times, this is what constant prayer is. It doesn't take words, it doesn't, you don't need even to say the Jesus prayer. As far as you want God to be present in your life and you want God to be present in your life and, and see, correct and guide your actions at all times. And this is unceasing prayer. And this is how miracles can happen. 
And if you if you have this consciousness, there will be a state, there will be a there will be a time in your life that you will end up experiencing God's presence. Doesn't matter where we pray. Where we pray. Mm. It doesn't matter where we pray, and it doesn't matter how we pray, as far as we feel that our heart is in the right place. Because God is everywhere anyway. So, for example, you can be playing soccer, and by doing what we said before, having your heart open in front of God, you won't get upset, because you know that God is there. Uh, you can ask Him for help, uh, but it doesn't really matter who, who wins at the end of the day, as far as your conscience stays clean and you have fun because you're a kid and you're doing it for fun. We have to be happy in front of God. It's not such a thing as um, when we pray, we have to be like this. It, it doesn't work like that. Does it make sense? Is it achievable? Is it different? Is it difficult? What do you think? Well, I feel as though it helped me because you know, I've got a deeper understanding about prayer and that you can pray anywhere as long as you have your heart open to God. You don't necessarily need to be in front of an icon to pray. We also know from the life of the saints that when they have a spiritual experience with God, prayer stops. Because the spiritual experience is above prayer. It's the fulfillment of prayer. It's like prayer is a tool, but then this connection happens, and then you don't need the prayer to connect you anymore because you are connected. And what this means is that if you're standing in front of God's presence, you don't need to worry if your heart is open in front of Him. You don't need to worry if you will say, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me, a sinner. You don't need to worry if God will hear your prayers because God is there and you can feel that God is there, and you can feel that God is there for you. And you forget all about yourself and you focus on God. What do you think? Well, another thing that I picked up on as well, that you said that God is life and He is love and joy. And if you don't, well, I felt feel as though is that if you don't have God in the center of your life, then everything else will fall apart. And we should not be afraid of our mistakes. Because even the wisest thing, if it's not blessed from God, it's not going to bring any good results. And we might make the worst mistake, and if we put it in front of God with our repentance, He might bless us in ways that we can't even understand. Like the thief on the right hand of Christ when He was crucified, He did so much wrong in His life, but He understood it at the end. He put it in front of Jesus' feet and He told Him, Remember me in your kingdom, and he was the first one to enter heavens. Like, it's unbelievable. It doesn't matter if we righteous, it doesn't matter if we do good or bad. Of course, we'll try and do our best, but we should not be afraid of mistakes because sometimes mistakes, they help us understand what's right and what's wrong. Once they asked a professor, he was a very wise man, and out of respect, they asked him, who was, who, who was your best spiritual teacher in your life? He had known a lot of holy people. And he said, the best teacher in my life were my mistakes. Because this is how we learn. And this is how we understand our priorities in life.